Tropical Storm Julia named in the Caribbean Sea. About an hour ago, the National Hurricane Center named our latest named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season, Julia, a tropical storm at 12.7 north, 73.1 degrees west, just off the coast of Colombia right now, a low latitude storm that is likely to intensify in the southern Caribbean Sea. At 12 p.m. Eastern Time, it has winds of 40 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,002 millibars, moving nearly due west at 21 miles per hour. Just a little bit of a northerly component in that westward movement uh, and is expected to gradually intensify now that it's got more water ahead of it and is expected to become a hurricane according to the latest NHC forecast. Here it is right now in terms of its uh, position in relation to land. It's quite close to the coast there uh, with the winds particularly on the northern side. Obviously not much chance for the southern side to develop just yet of course with all of that land proximity recently. Hurricane warnings for San Andres, Providencia and Santa Catalina Islands in Colombia. It is currently 133 kilometers from Rio Hacha on uh, the coast of Colombia there. 896 from Providencia, 932 from San Andres, 1121 from Preda Cabezas on the coast of Nicaragua, and 1161 from Bluefields. A hurricane watch has now been issued for the coast of uh, Nicaragua at this time, with a tropical storm watch issued for parts of Honduras. A tropical storm warning remains in effect for the coast of Colombia. Torrential rainfall over those areas in Central America on Sunday and Monday is likely to cause flash flooding and landslides with rainfall amounts up to 350 millimeters possible. So that's what we're warning about, about the most for at least the most widespread impacts probably going to be flash flooding. But of course in coastal areas and on those islands we could be looking at hurricane conditions uh, which is somewhat reminiscent of what we saw two years ago for these areas impacted. Hopefully this storm won't be anywhere near as strong though. Here is the forecast and you can see that wind uh, field expands, passes over those islands and it makes landfall in central Nicaragua possibly, although there is uncertainty about that and a model split of sorts. Uh, but by the end, by the we get through the uh, week there, it continues to move through Central America as a remnant low and eventually dissipates completely just short of, uh, of Veracruz in Mexico. The National Hurricane Center cone shows something somewhat similar to that and you can see there expected to be a hurricane as it passes through those islands and through Central America. Uh, decent agreement on the storm's intensity right now. NOAA ADT way out there at 70 miles per hour, I don't know what's got into that. But of course Recon are, have also been in the storm recently to corroborate the 40 mile an hour readings that the National Hurricane Center are running with. So we've got it pretty much nailed down there on how strong this storm is. And there is the chances of tropical storm conditions for various parts of Central America. And you can see those red areas, that's around 70 to 80% there now already for parts of Nicaragua. And for Providencia, over 80% chance of tropical storm conditions to reach your area in those next three days. GFS model develops a system gradually and becomes a hurricane only in the latter stages there. Category 1 landfall, and that's a potentially a hopeful scenario. There is a chance that this storm could intensify quite a bit more than the forecast to category two or maybe even category three. But model consensus so far is generally sticking to around middle to high end category one. So fingers crossed uh, it does uh, not get much stronger than that and hopefully weaker. Later on in that period, some of its remnant energy might transfer to the Eastern Pacific and possibly generate a storm there as well. Here is the uh, precipitable water graphic, uh, sort of a mock-up of what you would see on water vapor imagery and you can see the storm's energy there and its remnant energy moving right the way through Mexico and it sort of splits into two by that point because of the land mass, some of it in the Atlantic, some of it in the Eastern Pacific and then the Atlantic part gets uh, whipped away by this massive front that's moving through towards the end of that five day period. Anything left of uh, Julia's remnants by then uh, will then be turned eastwards and probably over the Yucatan Peninsula eventually. Um, 
So that's what it's showing right now. And these, uh, this is the precipitation chart. So watch this one closely as well, just to show you which areas are going to be getting the most rainfall according to the latest model scenarios. And it suggests that generally coastal areas on either side of Central America will get the worst deal in the next seven days. You can see some even pink areas there as well for parts of, I think that's Guatemala, possibly El Salvador, uh, with some very high rainfall amounts. But along the coast where the hurricane will impact, uh, we could be looking at 12 inches, that's 300 millimeters of rain, and around 10 inches further north into Honduras, 250 millimeters. But some areas in uh, the southern coast there could get maybe 22 inches there being depicted. And in terms of sea surface temperatures ahead of the storm, this is in Fahrenheit, I'll convert as we go along, around 28 degrees Celsius, maybe pushing 29 degrees there actually, especially if the storm goes a little bit further towards the north, definitely into the 29s there. So very conducive conditions in terms of sea surface temperatures, a very warm atmosphere for the storm to develop. The main thing that this storm is probably going to be lacking as it moves on is time, because it is only around three days or less now, until that landfall occurs. Uh, it doesn't have as much time um, as other storms may have, have, uh, have had, but it is still quite a lot of time for this storm to intensify quite rapidly. Here it is on satellite imagery. It's still got a little way to go yet. Recon suggesting that perhaps it's got maybe an elongated center or maybe even two centers at the moment. It's hard to tell until we get the full data, uh, but at the moment it is looking a little bit sloppy in terms of its uh, central core. I'm not seeing a huge amount of rotation in the upper levels. You can see it a bit more in the lower levels in the background there. And as we switch to the infrared view, you can see the storm producing decent amounts of convection, uh, but it's not got a decent symmetry or anything like that yet and most of that convection is probably a little is, is quite a bit actually to the west of the center I think um, can't quite tell on that actually it could be closer uh, but looking at that wider shot there you can see the general picture the storm size relative to the Caribbean area is not a huge storm but it is going to get more firepower as it continues to move towards the west moving at a decent pace as we already mentioned um, and I think it's rightfully so that hurricane warnings are in effect. We are expecting this to become a hurricane category one most likely, but hope, uh, well, hopefully it won't be worse than that, but there always is that potential. We'll have more updates on this storm as it continues.